Think about how you're opening your movie and make it theatrical. This has got to feel important. It's like, oh, it's important. I need to watch this. So, you know, like the opening of a theater opera, light flashes, sit down, something has happened and the lights dim slowly. There's a performance before you even get to the stage because it frames how I look at the first shot. I am in ethnographic filmmaking, which is a course that partners with Philadelphia high schools uh, looking to tell stories of students within them. We learned basic ethnographic methods like taking field notes um, and how to interview somebody. And then we also learned um, how to film with a camera and how to edit that footage with software. Ethnographic filmmaking is a course that I co-teach with Professor Kathy Hall. Kathy is the chair of UPenn's Graduate School of Education's Department of Literacy, Culture and International Education. I'm a filmmaker. So this course tries to merge the, these two disciplines, ethnography and documentary filmmaking. This course has really served to be a space where I get to practice what it means to do ethnography, but also to make a film, to think about how the questions that I'm considering and my interactions with people will allow me to produce something to share with others. Our students have to learn to make films. That's like controlling a wild animal uh, when you bite, get through with the hardware and the software. And then they have to go into real schools and work with real students. So we can't do this by ourselves. We have to have good relationships and partnerships with the School District of Philadelphia and also with the Netta Center for Community Partnerships at the University of Pennsylvania. I'm working with Cover High School in Philly. We are working at Sayre High School. And I'm working with the workshop school in West Philadelphia. We are telling the story of a college track class at the workshop school and what it means to be college ready, what it means to be a college student, and what college actually means for these students, many of whom are first generation college students. And we're looking into seniors' life and how covers plays a role at their, uh, at their stage of being a high school student and how it's going to lead to them to their future life. We are working at Sayer High School with an after-school program called Lit Lounge where students can, can come and primarily um, work on their theater, public speaking, and improv skills. Um, but really, Lit Lounge serves as so much more. It's a place where students go to express themselves. For me personally, the great revelation has been going into Philadelphia high schools. These are not necessarily communities that I personally come from, but just like most filmmakers, it's really a privilege and an honor to be allowed to share someone's space. Spatial context is very useful for your films. Every TV show you ever, ever watch does this. Before they come back from commercial, you never start straight at the scene. They start with the exterior of the building and then they start the scene. Why? To re-establish space. I actually never been to a high school in the United States before. So that was my first time went to a high school, a public high school in uh, both Philadelphia and the United States. So at first time, like uh, still very new to me and I'm nervous and anxious, like how students will see me and treat me, how will they work with me since I'm American.
Okay, now let's flip this around. Center it. Okay, are we tangled? I think the first couple times we went to Sarah, it was it felt very clumsy, you know. I didn't want to show them that I didn't exactly know what I was doing. I just a lot of pressure because there's a lot of buttons on it, a lot of buttons that I didn't really know about yet, and I was afraid to touch without the manual or your help. <laughs> The workshop school is interesting. They always have people coming in, they have donors, they have different things like that that are moving through the building. I work as a journalist, so in some ways, kind of being intrusive or feeling intrusive doesn't bother me as much anymore because I'm used to kind of showing up and being like, here I am, sorry, kind of have to deal with me. But having a bigger physical camera, actually having to hold it and be in someone's space is very different. In the beginning, we were definitely strangers in the classroom, like kind of awkwardly peering over their shoulder and asking what they were working on. We joke that you can see like the eye flicker, like the look over, like the, oh, they're, they're totally on me right now. Definitely the most challenging part has been um, like working within a group, you know, who has the camera today? Who has a hard drive? Um, how do we, you know, where are we gonna meet up to edit? Um, where are we gonna meet up to transfer this, uh, um, this equipment? Um, who's going what day? Cause you know, we're all, we're all students, or some of us are students and work full time. Some people have families, you know. So that, I think definitely just being on the same page about the project and being on the same page about, you know, when we're going to film has been really a challenge. You know, it's so hard to like set up times so that we can all meet, so that we can all do this filming together, so that we can all do this editing together. But you need your partners, you need your group in order to really make sure everything is at like its top quality. Working with the other two people who have very different kind of ideas is, is really hard for us to finally um, agree upon the storytelling. I feel like during the whole filmmaking process, each one of us need to make uh, com compromises, constantly need to make compromises. Because you're depending on other people, like how they react and how they act or, or how the weather <laughs> looks like. It's, you can really control all those elements there. Yep. The hardest part, at least for me personally, is all of these people are so intricate and everyone has a very real dynamic in that classroom. And capturing all of that's really hard. And the hardest part of telling stories, I think, is always really showing exactly what you want to show and getting it to come through in the exact way you want it to. I think I came into this project thinking that it would be easy to make, you know, a few minute video with high school students. I kind of had an idea of what that sort of video might look like or be about. These students, they know a lot. They have a lot of opinions, more so than I ever did when I was in high school. So um, not only did that like really impress me, I wanted to not only be a part of that, but to do it in like a really professional um, way, which is what I'm just now learning. <laughs> Semi-amateur professional. <laughs> Super amateur. Remember in film storytelling, you can have a very simple plot. You know, the plot could be kids filming other kids. But underneath that, people can reveal significant things. It's really stressful, to be honest. Yeah, I think the deadline is actually next week, but we got enough footage and we, we, we have everything in plan, so hopefully <laughs> we can have a well-structured story and some great footage. We are just trying to get to know their stories and their experience at school and not like only for the purpose of like creating a film. So I think it also makes us like or get along with each other much easier. A lot of stuff to do today. <laughs> Ooh, great. I usually have like a full day by the time we get to the after school program. I'm usually really tired. I'm like often not in a great mood. I've sent like hundreds of emails throughout the day. 
and I'm like, oh gosh, I gotta go to the school now. So this is gonna be a couple more hours. It's gonna be, you know, very difficult. Um, and then I get there, and we hang out with the students, and we film, and we talk, and you know, fun stuff happens. And my entire day just like turns around. I feel like that every time I go, I feel kind of like at you know the bottom of the hill, and then when I leave Sarah, I'm at the top of the hill. I feel like I've grown with them in a sense, even though I see them only like a couple of times a week. Um, so it's just been really fun and really inspiring um, to have them as role models in terms of how to use a, a space like Lit Lounge in my own life. <laughs> I don't know, this class isn't just a class. That, that's very evident. And if you go and spend hours in the classroom, with kids who have a say in this, who have a stake in this. We're getting to know them and they're real people. And so I just think it's important because that shift became really clear. And in the beginning, I think it's really easy to feel like, oh, we're just coming in and sitting and listening. But the minute students start being honest with you, I think it's like, okay, we're here to do something real and this is important. Whenever Amit would tell us to storyboard and all this stuff, I was like, this is a lot of work. But intentionality behind filmmaking is actually so, so important. I would like my students to use this to change their communities for the better. I think urban schools, specifically urban high schools, get really bad raps as dangerous places, as places where kids aren't as smart and I mean, I know that's not the case, but to see these kids having this dynamic conversation, it really stuck home as what difference would it make if more people could come in and see this interaction and see these kids and understand that the stereotype is so far from real. There is a point at which the film stops being yours and it goes out and then the audience um, will tell you they will see things that you didn't even realize was in your film. They will capture things that you didn't anticipate. What I hope will happen for my students is that they will sit there and see this and they'll be sitting with their audience and they will get a chance to see their work and how it affects a person sitting right next to you. I think I want people to feel the way I felt when I was in the room interviewing them and they were giving me these, these words of wisdom that I was like, oh my God, I please, I need to hold on to this. This is golden advice. You know, I needed to hear this and other people need to hear this. I hope the kids are really happy and feel like they are portrayed in an honest and authentic way because I think we've gotten to know them. They are brilliant, amazing, smart kids and they are funny and they're charismatic. It's been amazing for us to get kind of this window into their world and I hope they feel good about the way it actually looks at the end. Changed though? How has it changed? If, if, that's, if that's what you have. I mean, somebody hugged me the other day. The other day. That, was, that was something new, you know? I was like, oh, now we're hugging. That was kind of nice. But um, yeah, I couldn't have imagined that on the first day. Um, I don't know. Yes. <laughs> wow.
Oh my goodness. Okay. Okay. What? <laughs> you guys should like give out deodorant in this class because it's <laughs> high stress, <laughs> high stress level. Yeah. Just sing forward. To, yeah, you've got to lean. No, no, lean forward like you're an intense oh, documentary yeah, filmmaker. Okay. You're very passionate about filmmaking.